Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have a look at something I call severance strobe cuts, also called Fritz cuts. If you haven't watched the series on Apple TV called Severance, well, you're missing one of the greatest series ever written. It's amazing. Uh, I'll put a link in the, the behind the scenes where I got this idea from, and it's how to cut between these two scenes. Now, doing this isn't very complicated for video, but for the audio part, it's a pain. So I'm going to give you this project to download so you just slip in your uh, audio and it works. So let's go have a look at it and I'll show you how we built it. Let's go back to the beginning again. So two shots and some flashes between that. And what I did is I, I took the example from the show and I, I dissected it. And I actually drew myself a little guide where it went from uh, one frame to another, one frame, one frame, two frames, two frames, one frame, one frame, two frame, three frames. I don't think it has to be exactly like that, but I, the randomness in the, uh, the choices, I think, add to this. Because if you watch this enough, it doesn't just look like bup, 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 bup frames. There's, there's that, well, let's just see if you can feel the two and then the three at the end feels a little different. Okay, so what do we got here? We got two clips. I've got this clip and I've got this clip. And they were similar to uh, the clips that, that there was someone walking and then she was looking at the, at the camera. So that's where I got this uh, example from. So let's have a look. If I turn this track off, it's just the woman staring at the camera. So the very first clip, there's nothing special about it. It just ends. And it ends at the end of this three uh, frame section. The piece above, if I turn the bottom one off, there's one frame, there's two frames, there's one frame, two frames, and then it goes to the end. And if you're wondering what this little uh, mark is here, um, I see this on Reddit all the time. People ask what that is. That's the way that Premiere Pro shows not only where the playhead is, but which frame it's controlling, which is where the playhead is to that, that piece. So from there to there. So I'm zoomed way in, right? Typically you're way out like this. I'm zoomed into one frame. Okay. So for this example here, you're just cutting the video um, in, in these segments. So in the project I'll give you, the markers, you just follow the marker. One frame, two frame, one frame, two frame, and the remainder of the clips. The rest are holes. So you see the video below it when it's going back and forth. Okay, so that's nothing special. You're just cutting one video on the top. It gives a feeling of a transition, but it's not really a transition. It's a cut from, from one clip to another clip. Now, what really sells this is the audio. Let's look at it without audio, and I'll show you uh, why it's so different. I'll mute those. And in fact, I'll turn the, the top track on. See that droning sound that I start with, it misses all of that, that drama in, the, in the, the bottom. So if I turn that on. Now this is what I thought this was worth talking about. And that's the fact that the audio is written in, in a way that it sounds different with each clip. So each clip has its own track 
And when you cut between that second track on a frame, two frame, one frame, that gives that cha 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 kind of thing. So now, if you listen to the original, the composer actually wrote the music with those cuts in mind. So obviously we can't do that. But if you use my tracks, you can actually slide in an audio track and the, 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 uh, uh, the changes are in this uh, sequence. So if you have a look down here, let's just go look at this. We'll get to this one in a second, but that's the audio. So here the audio comes up, goes down, up, down, up, and down. And uh, this is the part that's a pain in the butt because if you're trying to make this and you go too far, it flips on you. It just drives me crazy. There's no way to draw the top one and the bottom one and have you bash into it and stop and, and snap to it. It just flips the other way. Very annoying. So I've done all the work for you. But here's the important part. These are not clip keyframes. Clip keyframes, which are very useful, in this example, they don't work because if you move the audio file, the keyframes move with it. I don't want to do that. The changing of the audio should be based on the picture, not the, uh, not the uh, track, so that you can move the track. So what's really happening is this. If you go to your audio track mixer, go to the window menu, audio track mixer, you'll see this changing, this automation that's changing. So I'm, it's moving the track information. Okay, two things about changing track keyframes. First of all, they're hidden. You have to show them. Second of all, and this is really problematic, if you forget you left the, key, the track keyframe setting on, then you won't be able to select, edit, or move a clip. Let me show you where they are. So, when you have all of your clips, all of your tracks at the, at the default setting, you don't see anything. You have to either open them up, oops, open them up and look at them here, or you can use the Alt key with, or on Windows, the Option key and use your trackpad or scroll wheel. Now, this is what it normally is, clip keyframes, so you don't see them. Now, by the way, right now I don't need the waveforms. The keyframes are so hard to see that I'm going to turn off the waveforms. Uh, and they're in the, I always forget, is it the wrench? Yes, it's in the wrench. Audio, audio waveforms. So let's just shut these off. So I open this up. I click in here. I go to track keyframes volume. That's where these changes are. The volume changes change the track mixer. The clips change the clip mixer. And no, you can't copy and paste these onto another track. Once you copy them, they'll, you can paste them as many times as you want in this track, but I couldn't do another track. So I had to do my second example all over again. So here they are. And by the way, if you use the pen tool, the pen tool is the best way to work with these and select them. So basically, this is what I did. Um, I turned on in the sequence menu, show audio time units. That allows me to, to zoom in closer than a frame. So now I'm in between frames and I could easily move these around, whoops, when I was adding them. So I drew them in here and this goes not to the top. If this goes to the, whoops, the, oh. If this goes to the top, it's too much. It's going to zero dB. Zero dB, it, dB is unaffected. Zero is just no changes. Um, and then minus 100, zero. Minus 100, that's what's changing here. Okay. So that's this one. Now, the next one, I'm going to go back and turn on the audio waveforms. 
Let's turn this one up and turn this one down. Mute that one and let's listen to a different track. So the opening is still the same, it's that drone. The second one is just a different track. So let's have a listen to this. One more time. So if you listen to the first track, oh, by the way, watch this. Oh, can I ch click on that? Yeah, that's on clip keyframes now. No, I can't. See when these are on track keyframes, you can't even select them. Oh, there we go. So the first one had this beginning. So the first one had that ch -ch 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 in there. So it's it was a little easier to work with that. The second one though, that's uh Oh, boy, oh boy. The second one doesn't have that. So it's just, it's just a sustaining distorted guitar, man. But when you have those, those automations in there. Okay, I chose this, this clip this audio clip, uh, music clip for two reasons. First of all, it has that droney beginning to show you how it works, but it also has a bigger bop coming up. And that's this right here. Let's listen. Right there. So remember I said you could slide this over. So what I want is that, that drum hit to be when the rest of the clip starts here. Oops, right there. So uh, I obviously can't move this. Um, I can't even select it when I have my, when I have the, the track keyframe. So I have to go back to clip keyframes and I'll move this over to here. So that's where the drum happens. Now let's listen. And if we go back to the volume, see my keyframes haven't moved. All right, let's go back and, and listen to this. So now you can see why the audio part of this is, is way more complicated because of that track keyframe thing. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's just the way that it works. Um, but like I said, you can download this, this project for free from videorevealed.com slash shop. You can slide in your own clips. Obviously I can't give you these clips. I'll put in a placeholder so you can just flip out your, your video and put it in there. But you could use this for, for literally any transition where you wanted. You could nest this and drop this into something else. And go watch Severance. Even if you don't have an Apple TV account, uh, go sign up just to watch Severance. It, it's insane. The link to this uh, behind the scenes has a kind of a spoiler for the last uh, episode. So if you haven't watched the whole thing, go get Apple TV, watch it, and then come back and uh, mess around. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more, you can do that on videorevealed.com slash shop. Download this project, which I'll have up there for free. Till next time. Oh yeah, thanks to all of our wonderful donors. You can donate once or monthly, any amount. Um, you can donate because I made this for you. Hey, Colin, thanks. Here's a buck, you know. Uh, but till next time, I'm Colin Smith. And it's my job to get all jazzed up watching these amazing series, pick apart some cool stuff, and show you how you can do it and do it for you.